I pulled every one of your recommendations in the comments of the previous guitar rankings and put together a pristine list of 10 bands and artists that I felt expressed something a little different in the world of instrumental and modern guitar. Some of the artists I'm somewhat familiar with and others are completely new names for me. So I did some extensive listening to everyone that's listed here to see how they hold up in a ranking. And just as a disclaimer, this ranking is solely based on personal preference and opinions, so I'm just going off of what I like. There's no real objective metrics. Just had to throw that one out. Alright, so first up, we have a name that has been recommended frequently in the comments. It's Rafa Rodriguez. <laughs> Rafa Rodriguez, also known as Rafa, is the intersection where instrumental guitar meets bedroom pop, and I only say that to provide contextual reference for the music he makes. I'm not entirely sure if it's classified as bedroom pop, but his sound is made up of motifs that are consistent across bedroom artists. Things like multi-instrumental layers, gritty, intimate productions, and soft, almost raw-sounding vocals. I do remember seeing him in Jared Dine's 2022 Shred Collab but I wasn't aware of who he was at the time. So shout out to the comments for bringing me up to speed. Now, what makes Rafa a little unique and the reason he's on this list is because the guitar breakdowns in his songs are really good. And I should also mention, he's more of an artist who plays guitar, not strictly a guitarist per se, but he clearly knows his way around both the fretboard and musical progressions. My only gripe with Rafa is that his discography is slimmer than I'd like. And by that, I mean he's only released four tracks on music platforms. But to counter that statement, all four of them are beautifully crafted and carefully articulated pieces of music. Every time I listen to his most recent track, Head Your Bets, I can't help but sing the chorus in my head for the rest of the day. It's a seriously catchy song. He does have a few clips on his channel that better express his guitar playing specifically, so go check those out first if, you, if you've never heard of him. But overall, he's a great artist, and lately his music has been serving as just a little bit of creative inspiration for me. So with all of that being said, I think his music's incredible. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark him out amazing. We're we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> Next, let's talk about one of the OGs of modern guitar, Nick Johnston. Nick Johnson is the artist I'm most familiar with on this list, and he was also one of the early pioneers who helped push the more modern style of guitar playing that's present today. His style is a satisfying blend of the traditional 80s playing and textured virtuosic guitar playing that's more common with today's younger artists. And his range is absolutely insane. His music covers nearly every genre that includes a guitar and he does them all really well. I first heard Nick Johnston when he featured in Polyphia's track Champagne and he, he absolutely ate. I was much younger at the time, but the sound gave me my first glimpse at how passion can be translated into how you play the instrument. You you can just feel it. Nick Johnson's music is nothing short of just incredible, versatile guitar playing. He's the kind of guitar player you can listen to and tell he knows exactly what he's doing. The thing I value most in his music is that it isn't just aimless guitar playing over backing tracks. There's real direction in the playing as the tracks progress. I've gone through several periods when I would listen to a ton of his music and it, it never ceases to amaze. The world of guitar has had some serious players throughout its lineage and, and Nick Johnson is one of them. All in all though, I mean, he's an incredible guitar player, but music wise, I'm gonna put him in great. It's not as contemporary. It's not as contemporary. Up next, we have Ichikoro. If you think Ichikoro sounds similar to Ichika, that's because it's Ichika's band, in case you weren't aware. Surprising, I know. Ichikoro is an instrumental neo-soul group with a strong jazz essence. The music is spanky, vibrant, and pretty harmonious. Considering the fact that the band shares some resemblance to jazz music, it's not overly complex. And lately, I've been enjoying music that's more straight to the point. But... All that being said, I do have some personal feelings about their music. Now, I, I do enjoy some of the music Ichikoro makes. Ally, Q, and Ninja are just a few of my favorites at the moment, but if I'm being 125% honest, the guitars across most of the tracks just, just aren't my favorite. These are incredible musicians and they obviously know what they're doing. Obviously. 
but there are some songs where I find that the guitar takes away from what's happening musically. And when I'm saying songs, I don't mean songs in their entirety because most of them at least have some sections where the guitar accompaniment works exceptionally well. But I just can't say that's the case across the board for me personally. In some songs, it almost feels like the guitar just has to be at the forefront for the sake of a chica being attached to it. And, and really that's just me nitpicking because it's still great music. Some tracks I really enjoy and, and some not so much. That's just the probable reality for most listeners honestly just as a side note before i move on i remember when achika was still making a name for himself and he slowly went from that ethereal sound that he's most known for to the more spanky twangy guitar riffs during that time i wondered how his fan base could react to this shift because it was so drastic and i figured it would only be a matter of time before he created a new outlet to express that style and Ichikoro was his way of doing that. So props to Achika for being able to build a successful band with a completely different sound. They, they seem to be killing it and doing their thing, which is, which is awesome. For me, I don't think their music is just my taste. <laughs> like I said, there's some songs that I do really enjoy listening to and other ones that they just don't really do it for me. That's, that's where I put them. That's where I put them. All right, now we're getting into the artists that are completely new to me. So kicking it off, we have Their Dogs Were Astronauts. Now, with a name like this, if your band is not bringing it, let's be honest, you just look like a bunch of clowns. But I'll go ahead and clear the air and say they have earned their name. Actually, they are beyond good enough to have that name. Their Dogs Were Astronauts is a duo instrumental progressive metal group from Austria. After browsing their catalog, I can say that they possess attributes that are outside of the metal realm as well, and, and some seriously good ones. For one, their guitars are tight, and the productions are bulletproof. The mixes are nothing short of perfection, and I, I don't mean that lightly. You talk about music that puts you on another planet, they have the formula. They could seriously bottle it and sell it because they are making some of the most exciting instrumental guitar music I've come across in a while. I can't remember who recommended me to check them out, but they are a serious gen. Serious gem. They do make songs that tend to be a bit longer, but you forget about the length since there are so many change-ups and new engaging elements coming and going all throughout the songs. They actually throw everything at the wall. You get fun synth runs, melodic guitars, and some otherworldly soundscapes on top of banger drums, which I'm not sure if they're programmed or live. I, I couldn't tell. On top of that, their, their music is diverse, and, and boy do I love artists who change it up. For, for better or worse. It, it's really a blend of everything. And to paint the picture better, think of a combination of Aaron Marshall, Animals' Leaders, and Arc Echo. I know that might fall flat for a few of you, but there, there's just no better way for me to describe their sound. The song I was initially recommended was Oasis. So if you're looking to try out something new, I too recommend starting with Oasis and just go down their popular tracks from there. I also listened to their most recent 2023 album, Momentum, and it is art. I'll leave it at that. You can kind of tell when I really like an artist, right? <laughs> it's amazing for me, it's S tier. So when I was trying to decide who all I wanted to add to this list, I, I felt like I just couldn't leave this band out. It's Caspian. Caspian is an instrumental post-rock group with an ethereal cinematic sound. I honestly was unsure how to best explain what post-rock is, so I looked up some classifications and found where someone on a Reddit thread described it as rock music performed and arranged as classical music. Even though that's not 100% accurate, it makes the sound a lot easier to grasp for someone who's never heard it. You could easily call it experimental rock, but anything can be experimental, so that, that doesn't do much. I'm not too familiar with the world of post-rock, but I definitely will be getting into it more after listening to this band. It's just, it's just beautiful music. If you've seen any of my other rankings, you know how much I value melody and feel in music. All music doesn't necessarily need that to be good or enjoyable for that matter, but having it will always put you a step above. Always. With Caspian, there isn't just one element that's in the limelight. It's an orchestral harmony of numerous layers, 
all picking up where one leaves off. I have so much respect for this type of sound because it requires an exceptional understanding of how specific melodies and sounds work in context to each other. Pretty much what I'm saying is it requires ripened ears to, to pull off well. I did some digging through Caspian's discography and they have an incredible lineup of music that dates all the way back to 2005. If you haven't heard of or listened to Caspian, I seriously recommend giving them a listen, especially if this style of music is up your alley. For me, this band simultaneously ties together some of the best aspects from several different genres. There's guitars, there's melodies, there's harmonies, emotions, reverb, the list goes on. I'll be listening to a good bit of Caspian in the days to come. In terms of this ranking, I'm going to put them at great. I think it's A-tier music. They have such a lengthy discography and even their albums have different feels and styles. So if you don't like one, there's a good chance you'll probably like another one. I was able to find plenty that I that I really enjoyed. So it's it's an A for me. Next up on our list is Sincato. Sincato is a solo project created by the progressive rock guitarist slash YouTuber Charlie Robbins. Now, I'm familiar with Charlie Robbins, but I've never actually given Sincato a listen. At its core, Sincato is just what I described, instrumental progressive rock music. The music of Sincato really doesn't deviate too far from what you'd find from any other modern guitarist within this genre. There are some fun and engaging production tactics that can be heard in the guitar tone selection, as well as the accompanying background melodies, but the emphasis does still lie on the guitar playing. And in case I'm sending mixed signals, the guitar playing is nothing short of remarkable. The Patterns EP is easily my favorite project from Sincato of the ones I've listened to. I listen to the majority, but but not all of them. And personally, I think that project showcases the most variety in sound and techniques, again, of the ones I've listened to. And overall, the guitar playing is solid and the music is, is very well executed. And if you didn't hear me say it just now, it's solid music. It's solid music. Now keep in mind these this ranking is solely coming down to just my overall subjectiveness. This isn't me saying which ones are better than others. It's really more so which ones I've been enjoying more than others. So just felt like I needed to say that again. Now, next up, I, I wish I came across this artist sooner. It's Giuseppe Gilardi. I have no clue how I haven't come across this artist before, but Giuseppe Gilardi is an artist producing technical guitar playing in a form that's easily digestible. There's so much nuance to this style of music since it brings together modern metal, EDM, and dark atmospheric sounds into one style. Honestly, I absolutely loved it. I also want to note that he plays in a bossy concepts guitar, and I've yet to find anyone who plays one of those guitars that I haven't enjoyed. It's likely because Tosin created these guitars to precisely fit this sound and style of guitar playing. What Giuseppe Gallardi is doing in this music is both impressive from the musical sense and tasteful as a listener. The way the guitar fits seamlessly in the production works so well, and he's effective in creating that feeling he's going for. The song progressions continuously build as the tracks go on, and there's something alluring about the dark undertones that are present in his music. A lot of times, music of this genre doesn't follow a steady rhythm, but even in the slightly offbeat moments, Giuseppe Gallardi is still able to keep the music flowing at a consistent pace, which prevents you from getting lost in the layers or losing the melody, since it can be pretty complex for someone who isn't a hard listener of instrumental guitar. It blows my mind that Giuseppe Gallardi is the smallest artist on this list with just over a thousand monthly listeners on Spotify, but I'm sure it's only a matter of time before his music finds the right audience. His discography isn't super dense, but I listened to all of his tracks on Spotify and thoroughly enjoyed them. For those of you who love this more experimental style of guitar music, you won't be disappointed. Now, if I had to put it on this list, I think it's S, man. I think what he's doing here is super creative, super experimental, but executed at a high level. Now we have an artist whose name actually matches his music. It's The Algorithm. 
let me say it's not the easiest thing in the world to find interesting new bands and people who are making music outside of the mold but but that's that's what makes these rankings worth it especially when i do the ones you guys recommend the algorithm merges edm and progressive guitar in such a unique way to create this glitch synth instrumental rock music as both a producer and a listener these are sounds that give me new ideas and concepts to play around with what makes this even more impressive is that in the studio like making the music the algorithm is a one-man show hosted by the French artist Remy Gallego. The level of dedication it takes to play guitar at this level and produce electronic music, which isn't the easiest to make sound good, is inspiring. Now this sound isn't for everyone, but I personally find it to be so cool and exciting that there are people making music like this. I'm all for new sounds. I also love the dedication he has to the name The Algorithm. Even his Spotify description is written out as a proper line of code. It's just fun seeing artists be this in tune with their craft. While most of The Algorithm's music plays into the electronic aspect, there are a few projects that elicit more of that metal side, but I found myself enjoying the blend of the two sounds a bit more and I'd argue that's where most of the magic lies. Even if you aren't the biggest fan of this style, you can't go wrong with listening to a couple tracks to better understand what I'm talking about. And also if you produce music, it, it never hurts to hear something outside of the confinements of mainstream music or what you normally listen to. How he holds up on this list is gonna be solid. Now I found several tracks that I really enjoyed, but the reason I enjoy it so much is more so the novelty of it. Some tracks are musically engaging and worth repeating listening to, but other ones are more so just the fact of, ah, that's pretty cool. You know, so for that, it's, it's solid music. Now we have another name that I somehow have just never heard. It's Moray Pringle. My first impression of Maury Pringle is that he's a really good improvisational guitarist that can dominate a jam session. I I don't know, that's just the energy I get from his playing. He's another progressive instrumental guitarist, but he puts a modern twist on late 90s styled guitar licks. He doesn't have an overwhelming amount of music out, so I was able to go through all of it. And I'm gonna start with saying, the guitar playing across his tracks is really good. It's really good, okay? Maury Pringle can play the guitar. However, the music he makes is a little repetitive, which is more common across guitarists who are more along the lines of shred. When I come across a new artist, I start with listening to their popular tracks and Maury Pringle's was the song Stabs. And I thought it was good stuff. I thought it was really good stuff actually. So I went from front to back listening to all of his music, starting with his most recent album, Good Times, which I wasn't really a fan of, I know. The feel of each track is nearly identical and literally just sounded like a jam session. Nothing wrong with it. There just wasn't much to latch onto in terms of enjoying one track over another. And one thing I think I value over everything else is an artist's ability to be good at a certain style, but still be effective at changing the context of that sound across different tracks. I never really understood making an album and playing to the same formula for, for 20 plus minutes. Maybe it's just me, but I like to be on my toes, especially when I'm finding new artists to listen to and not feel like I've heard everything in their arsenal after five tracks. Going back to his track Stabs, I felt like this song had the most distinct feel and, and like it had a purpose. Unfortunately, outside of that, I, I wasn't able to find another track that felt like its own thing. There's clearly an audience for his music, I just can't say I'm a part of it. My appreciation though for what he makes is is all there, but I just can't say I'm, I'm all for it necessarily. So based off of what I said, you probably guessed it. I'm putting it in not bad. Not that it's bad at all. <laughs> But that's 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 where we're dropping it. Lastly, we have the progressive metal trio, the Omnific. The Omnific makes heavier progressive instrumentals, but they don't quite feel like metal, and it's likely due to the distortion being less present in the bass guitar of their mixes. To prevent my thoughts from being swayed by visuals, I don't watch any music videos of these artists before I make these videos. As I'm editing this, I just realized The Omnific is made up of two bass guitarists and a drummer. That's it. So considering that, what I'm about to say is obvious, but I did assume they also had a lead guitarist. Speaking of bass, a good chunk of their tracks, especially those from their debut album Escapades, emphasize the bass more than I normally hear, which I thought created 
a different sound, and it seems to be their thing across their music. Even though the Omnific possesses a metal backbone, when they slow it down and focus on the melodies, the execution is just as good. After listening to all of their music, there really weren't any negatives for me to point out. The songs Aaron and Ursatz were two of my favorites that are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Overall, there, there wasn't too much I found to be over the top amazing, but I did find a few tracks that, that I really enjoyed. So based off of that, I'm going to put them in solid. Now let's do a little review of what we got. So in A tier, we have Rafa Rodriguez, Their Dogs Were Astronauts, and Giuseppe Gallardi. Now all of them are at the top for different reasons, so I, I highly recommend going to check them out because they all do things that are very different, and they're just not sounds that I've really come across in the instrumental guitar space. In great, we got Nick Johnson and Caspian. Now Nick's just an all-time great, and then Caspian's doing, they have a really cool post-rock sound. The way they do it is different from other ones I've heard. In solid, we have Syncato, The Algorithm, and The Omnific. Three super cool bands. Just because they're not at the top doesn't mean they're bad, so they're still worth giving a listen to if you're interested. And in our C tier, we got Ichikoro and Mori Pringle. Definitely enjoy it, just, just not as much. Well, thank you so much to everyone who recommended artists throughout the previous rankings that I've done. But if you guys have some more artists or bands that are doing something cool and you want to hear me talk about it and rank them, just drop a comment below. But thanks to all of you for supporting. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.